Alrighty guys, thank you for coming to part 3. So we left off where I needed to fix that whole deal with the tire, and that's where we're going to begin here. I couldn't really find any introduction footage I had of going into that, so I'm just starting it with this. And it should be an exciting episode for you guys, so thank you for watching. Alrighty, so I just got the wheel off. Um, Get off pretty easy. Didn't expect it to be so easy. So now I'm gonna try and uh, deflate and then debead the tire. Then I'm gonna go ahead and look for the hole, then try and patch it. And while we're here, I thought I might show you guys. <laughs> right there. Yeah, you squeeze on it, and it blows air right at you. I don't think I hear anything inside of it. Got the tire off the hub or the wheel. Came off pretty easy after you debeat it. Look how nasty that is. I don't know if someone tried to put some sort of hole filler or flat fixer or whatever that stuff is, but that's nasty. It's all dried up. Anyways, so it's not tubeless. There's a tube right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down and take that out because I want to keep it in the correct orientation because the hole is here and I want to mark the hole on the tube when it comes out so I can be sure I can find it when I go to patch it. So as we can see the holes right there. Right here. Holy cow. Not exactly sure what this is. Seems to be some sort of growth. This tube is so nasty. It's so sticky. I think this is a patch. But I don't know if it's even working or not. What? I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. Filt it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and listen for leaks. Okay, yep, it's coming from this this stupid worthless patch job that was here. Yeah, I see the hole right there. You know, I don't even that can't be a patch. I don't even know what that is. I think something, there's no chunks missing out of the tire. Whatever. Okay. So anyways, we know the hole's right. Right over here. I can see it. I'm going to go ahead and patch this. This, uh, some stuff from a bike tire. And then I'm also going to try and figure out how to, how to patch this guy more. Because that's just asking for trouble. <laughs> This patch right here I put in uh, should be dry now. It's sat overnight because it was the last thing I did. And so that should be done. I'm going to go ahead and fill it soon. And I'm about to go somewhere. So before I go, I'm going to go ahead and try and patch um, this hole. I've, I think I can use this rubber here that was inside the tire. I'm going to heat it up, melt it, use some rubber cement, get it in there. And then when I'm gone, it should be drying. And then when I'm back, hopefully it will be done. I'll throw it on the mini bike. Put the pole starter on, hopefully that'll work, and then I'll be uh, hopefully set to give it a go. And also the sprocket for the uh, DC motor, wherever it is, um, the sprocket for that should be in today. So as long as I can find a car battery, I should be able to get it going, like uh, take the engine off and put the electric motor on. <laughs> what I was doing today and I left this plug in here drying and 
Uh, it looks okay. I mean, I'm sure you see the other half in there. I mean, I'm sure it's better than nothing. I'm sure something will get stuck in there. But I'm going to go ahead and shear the rest off. Just because I don't need that thing flapping around and maybe yanking a more tire out. But there's that. It's not going through. Kind of surprising. So I think that rubber cement in there might overnight harden a bit more. Be even better. And then, I mean, other than that, you can't really even tell too much. It should be good. Patch the tube. I'm going to go ahead and air that up and see how that works. And then I'm uh, just going to throw that in there. As long as the pull starter works, this guy should be riding very soon. Right, so I'm just finishing, just finishing airing up the tire. Um, squeezing it pretty dang good and I don't hear any leaks whatsoever out of that patch so that's fantastic news. I'm just going to squeeze in listen for leaks all around right now. Honestly I might just set the tire on there and maybe like a propane tank and a drill. So hopefully this will be enough weight to to push any air out of here or or anything just so I'm not wasting my time by having to take it off and be out of service <laughs> for uh, another while. And in the meantime, I got that DC motor going. That's just waiting on this as well, so we'll see how this goes. Sweet. Okay, so I just got back. It's been about a day since I checked on this. This part of the tire, it's it's pretty solid. I mean... That should, oh, something just flew out. That should hold up fine. It's fine. It doesn't need to hold air or anything, so that'll do. I just don't want, like, uh, things being able to poke that hole easily. And as for this, I know, jeez, I know we, uh, we plugged that and we set a bunch of weight on it and let it sit, and it hasn't really deflated at all. It feels pretty fine. I mean, I'd say the only thing that that's changed is just, you know, the pressure due to changes in the air temperature but other than that this is this thing is ready to go so i'm going to go ahead and, and drain this guy a little bit just so i could easily fit in that tube then i'm going to go ahead throw the tube on the rim maybe clean the rim a little probably not not get oh the outside i will and then i'm going to put the rim on the bike and then we're going to go ride it all right let's do it So I got the pull start on and the tire on. Tires filled with air. It's, it's wonderful. Made some progress. So now I'm gonna go bring it out. Hopefully, hopefully that that pull starter doesn't break again. I have a, a feeling it does. And if it does, I honestly don't care because I'm excited to put that electric motor on it. I'm probably just gonna start a new series with that, just so it's people don't get confused between like a gas engine one and the electric motor but regardless i'm uh let's go take it out and see how she does guys about to head out i'm just gonna go ahead and tighten the brakes first because they aren't 
They aren't really locking up the wheel. It's not on yet, but I'm cruising down the driveway. All seems well. Start this guy up in a bit. I don't have anyone else with me, so you guys gotta stay here while I start it. So when the fuel is when the fuel valve is that way it's on. Alright. It wants to start. Choke's off. just got done riding it and man it is insane when you, when you hit it full throttle it no matter how fast you're going unless you're topped out it lifts off the floor the front wheel it's absolutely insane i'm gonna <laughs> man i'm gonna check the gps and see how fast this thing went that was crazy ps said my max speed was 76 miles per hour <laughs> i'm gonna take a screenshot of it and put it in this video but the graph is like this. I was riding around, you know, it goes up. And on my way back, when I really hit it, it sloped up. And it was way up here. And all up here is past, seven, it was past the 70 and 60 line on the y-axis. <laughs> and I've used my GPS for, like, for my bike and everything. And it's, it's always been right. It always matches up. So, I mean, I don't believe it, but holy. Uh. It, that sure was the fastest I've ever been on it. It was... Oh my god, that was insane. I'm gonna try and get a flyby video soon, but damn. <laughs> what the? Alright, yeah, we're set. <laughs> Alright. Alright, don't crash. Alright, let's go. Backfire. <laughs> <laughs>